9.8 practice problems. The galvanic cell illustrated above generates a potential of a positive 1.1 volts. The construction of the second galvanic cell, not shown, only one modification was made. The copper electrode has doubled the mass of the copper electrode in the first cell. Which of the following correctly compares the initial uh, E naught for the second cell uh, to that of the first cell at 298 Kelvin and why? So um, we have just increased the size of the copper electrode. We didn't change the um, concentrations at all or the overall reaction. So uh, we are going to have um, our, our E naught be the same because the chemical reaction does not change. That would be option choice D. The cell potential for a standard uh, galvanic cell above is 1.56 volts. If silver nitrate um, and the silver is replaced with one mole of uh, lead to nitrate solution in a lead electrode, which of the following describes what will happen to the operation of the cell and why? Now, um, we are going to switch from uh, being this silver to the lead here. So our overall um, E naught is going to change. So my cell potential is overall going to uh, be decreasing because I went from having a positive um, E naught to a negative E naught. My zinc is going to uh, stay the same though. So um, can go ahead and eliminate the nothing changes there. Um, and then uh, between all of these, uh, it's not going to stop the reaction. Um, we still have the reaction going forward, however, uh, just not uh, quite as high of a voltage um, because we have the different uh, standard reduction potential. And uh, then we have whether it increases or decreases, and it is going to be decreasing because we have gone from a positive uh, 0.8 standard uh, reduction potential, or E naught, to a negative um, E naught. So we are decreasing our overall uh, cell potential. To construct the galvanic cell illustrated above, the salt bridge was prepared by soaking a piece of cotton in 5 molar sodium nitrate before placing it inside the U-shaped tube filled with distilled water. If the cotton was soaked in distilled water by mistake, which of the following best explains how the operation of the cell would be affected? So um, if we don't have a salt bridge, then we don't have a cell. So something along those lines is going to be what I am going to... Uh, going to be looking for, basically. Uh, no salt bridge, no cell. Uh, so not affected because the sodium and nitrate is not involved in the redox reaction. That's not going to be true. Operation uh, of the cell generates a higher potential. No. The cell will operate much longer. Nope. And the cell will not operate because the current could not be conducted. Yep. No salt uh, in the bridge. The bridge fails and we would not have a cell present there. So option choice D is gonna be my answer choice. The salt bridge is replaced by a platinum wire. Um, sorry, the favored uh, reaction occurs between the cell where you have silver and cadmium uh, going forward. And then uh, which of the above occurs from the following circumstance? Okay, so if we remove the salt bridge and replace it with a platinum wire, again, no salt, no bridge. Uh, we are not able to have a cell. So um, voltage is not gonna increase. Uh, the voltage isn't going to exist at all. Option choice C says that uh, the voltage becomes zero and remains at zero. Again, no salt bridge, no reaction, no cell. No salt, no cell. And the silver electrode is made 
uh, even larger just by increasing the size of the uh, electrode. I'm not going to change my overall voltage. The reaction will occur at the rate it occurs and produce the voltage it will produce. Um, I would need to change my concentrations or something about my cell bridge in order to change my voltage there. So no change in the voltage occurs is going to be my answer choice, option choice D. Um, <clears throat> in the galvanic cells for Y and Z, which of the following takes place in half cell three? So in half cell one, I have a strip of aluminum in one molar aluminum nitrate. Half cell two, I have a strip of copper in one molar copper two nitrate. And half cell three, I have a strip of iron in one molar um, iron two nitrate there. So, um, <clears throat> Uh, I am looking for what would occur if I went from um, aluminum being a part of this to iron and copper being a part of this. So uh, um, I think here they mean the half cell one, two, and three. So I'm just going to go ahead and uh, replace them with their respective numbers instead. as those are the half cells that are referenced here. So um, in the uh, galvanic cell Z, um, I am dealing with the half cells two and three. And so I have copper going from a oxidative state of zero to positive two, which means it is going to be oxidized. And that is going to um, occur in cell Z. So we have oxidized for cell three. So anything that doesn't say that uh, cell three is gonna be oxidized, um, I'm gonna eliminate. And um, we cannot have oxidation in both. We must have a reduction with each oxidation. So option uh, C is gonna be my best answer choice, but you could also see that copper is uh, overall reducing its charge. It's going from two to zero. And so we are being reduced. So uh, cell, Two is uh, being reduced, and uh, my cell three is being oxidized. So answer choice.